Our first guest tonight is running for vice president of the United States. In his spare time, he puts helmets on his gutters and listens to 8-track tapes. He's here in California and is all jacked up on Diet Mountain Dew. From Minnesota, please welcome America's sweetheart, Governor Tim Wall. <laughs> Person. I mean, I thought maybe, like, <laughs> our, our fantasies conjured you up. We're like, we read a, need a really nice man to come in and help us. Wow. And here you are. Yeah. Uh, can you really control the weather? And be honest with me, because <laughs> I have a pickleball game this weekend. I love you. You can just dial it down a little bit. It's been a little bit hot here in Los Angeles. Yeah. It, it never ends, does it? <laughs> no, it does it not ends. end. The election is four weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. You know that. What are you thinking of today? What is on your mind today? Yeah, well, good to see all of you here. Today, I think... Uh, little, little heavy today. I think most of us know a lot of folks have heavy heart today. It's the, the one-year anniversary of the, the Hamas terrorist attack in Israel. And I think for many of us, there's uh, 1,200 folks dead, 46 Americans, and uh, Vice President and I talking about uh, making sure that, that it never happens again, that Israel's secure and... The hostages are brought home, and uh, and the humanitarian crisis in Gaza ends. So these are things that we all talk about. And, and bring that to an end. I had the chance to go through the Nova exhibit here, which was the Nova Music Festival, and a, a young woman named Noah, uh, who was a survivor, walking through that and just thinking, these are kids, same age as my kids. And so... I think for all of us, vice presidents committed committed to Israel's security, but committed to uh, to bringing peace throughout the world. The Noah said, you know, we just want to dance again. That's what we want to do, and I think that's a sentiment. Yeah. It must be. I've been thinking about you a lot this week, and I've been thinking it must be so strange to have been a social studies teacher and now to be in the middle of the very things that you're. You were teaching. It's your strange students. that Jimmy Kimmel thinks about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is strange. So yeah, it's different. So I wasn't great in social studies. I have to. Admit. What is, what is one thing that you you hope every adult remembers from their social studies class? Is there something that that we key we've forgotten? Yeah. Well, you know that little. Uh, I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. That mm -hmm. is totally wrong. You're totally wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think about this, and for each folks out there uh, thinking about what those those social studies teachers talk to you about this this idea. And you all remember it when we grew up. This idea that uh, we could have different ideas, but we have unity, love the democracy, have an election, and then shake hands and admit the person who won won. I think some of those things uh, we all grew up with pretty commonly. So. Yeah, that was a... That seemed to be the biggest moment of the debate when you talked to J.D. Vance and you asked him, you know, do you believe Donald Trump won the election? And he wouldn't answer. That should have been the lead, don't you think? Yeah. Like 85 yeah. minutes before. Yeah, and... yeah. It, it, it's crazy. Although you have to remember also the last vice president who said... He thought Trump lost the election. Wound up being chased um, out of yeah, uh, the Capitol building. So it is something. It probably was in A the self preservation of his... mode. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very surreal to sit there and listen. And this is kind of the situation we're in. But I, I said, the, for me, at being an eternal optimist, I always say that. I supervise the high school lunchroom. You're an optimist, or you're dead. And I, uh, <laughs> I loved it. But this idea that look, we get to turn the page on that, and and. Uh, I plan on waking up on November 6th with Madam President, and that's then not what we do. Uh, just to be, <laughs> I just want to be, I want to be clear, you won't be waking up together. <laughs> no. Unless there's, unless you guys have gotten closer than we thought. I have a problem about not being specific with my language, <laughs> so thank you for that. Specifically right. So. I do want to ask you about being the lunchroom supervisor. <laughs> what, is, what does that entail? What are you, what are you yeah. watching for? Well, it's, it's preparation for Congress, first of all. Uh -huh. there, but, uh, <laughs> you're taking the tickets from the kids, and, uh, and then you're just making sure that everything's okay. And uh, this is no good deed goes unpunished. One of my first years in there, I went over the freshman table, and they're getting kind of loud. And I'm like, fellas, calm down. I look over, and the kid's got milk coming out of his mouth, turning kind of blue. I look down, a half a Polish dog there. And I realize he's choking on the Polish dog. 
So I grab him and I wondered if it always worked, and it does. I gave him the Heimlich and I popped the Polish dog across the room. <laughs> I got lunchroom duty every year after that. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it was. You were the football coach, you were the gay straight alliance uh, counselor. Um, yeah. And, I mean, this is. Were you popular with the students? Well, I think so. I, I was, they picked me to be Santa Claus. I think it was looks. So I was Santa uh -huh. Claus every year. So <laughs> seems like OK. Would you go to the prom and watch and make sure the kids weren't uh, touching each other uh, too much? Um, my wife and I built the proms. What so, do you mean? And, and nothing. You have to build the set. So if it's, you know, under the sea or whatever, you build an undersea set. And then we did, you know, a night in Paris. You built the Eiffel Tower. And for me, as my wife says, nothing in moderation. She says you couldn't just go vote and then you have to run for Congress and you do all this. But uh, <laughs> so we would build these elaborate proms and uh, and and the sets together. And that's, that's so crazy. And now you're in this position. I would imagine for your wife, this is, must be something that you guys look at each other from time to time and go, how did this happen? Yes, and she she just shakes her head and says, it's just the way it goes with us, I guess. There's nothing in this. So we're both teachers, and you just kind of throw yourselves into it. But I, I think uh, Vice President Harris talks about this. It's the beauty of America, truly. Where could a, uh, you know, where could a girl from Oakland, a middle-class family, a single mom, and a kid from Nebraska, and she says this to me, and she says, and look it, we're running for president and vice president. It, it's something. And she said, that's America, though. Wow. And how did it happen? Because I feel like, like we're, we're so desperate for um, great leaders, for people who seem to know what life is about and what is important. And then, and you are not somebody that I was familiar with beforehand. And then, meaning I don't know those things. Well, well no, not at all. Meaning you do know those things, and yeah, meaning no. that we didn't know you. Why didn't we know you? How did this? Like, how did you get picked? Do you know how it happened? Um, well, I certainly said I never planned my life to be here, but I think my life prepared me well. I think the vice president w was looking. I'm very proud of what we've done in Minnesota. I, I ran and won a, a congressional seat in a very red district for 12 years, and then uh, governor of Minnesota. I think people watched and we were doing things. I, I know the Republicans say they're super radical. Yeah, we feed our kids breakfast and lunch at school. It's a radical <laughs> idea. <laughs> and I think she... Yeah. And so... I think she saw that, and I think the one thing is, and it's, it's kind of, as all of us know in life, uh, it, some things just meant to be by fate or whatever. We get along really well. I, she's, she's amazing. Uh, she makes me laugh, and I, I think it's a good thing, by the way. Um, I think a president should know how to laugh, not at someone, but laugh with things or whatever. So, and I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you like it. So yeah, because this you might have thoughts on this that. this guy who used to be president is a little ups a little sore with me for uh, a joke I made. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't bother you. You don't get bothered by people making fun of comedians on Saturday Night Live or no, whatever. No, you started this. I taught school. I said the only thing if you're going to do profanity, spell it correctly towards me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Write that on there. So <laughs> I think your school experience it's it's so interesting because you do you know life is so much like school in yeah. so many ways. Um, even just talking about taking tickets, uh, you know, from students at lunch. You know, some of the students probably didn't have tickets. That's right. Every teacher who's done that job had another account where they just paid for them. Um, and that's, that's just the way it worked. But we made the case in Minnesota, why should we even have to go through all that? You don't have the kids come in and say, have you paid the heat bill at the school today? Or we just got new carpet. Where's your money for this or whatever? You, know, you go to school, take care of them. And what we found out is when you do school meals, Guess what? More kids show up for school. They do better. You can't learn on an empty stomach. And so. And you also have, I think, a very unique perspective on um, the school shootings and this, this horrible gun violence that is happening in our schools. During the debate, J.D. Vance suggested that we have stronger windows and stronger doors. As a teacher, what do you think when you hear? And what can we do well, about and, and this? And their idea is to arm teachers. That is a very, very bad idea. Teachers are not why they don't want it. Sure. I just, like the vice president, I simply refuse to accept. Donald Trump tells us to get over. J.D. Vance says, you know, this is just a fact of life or whatever. We have got to get to the point. And I'm a hunter. I'm a veteran. I, pheasant season opens in Minnesota this week. I'm excited about that. You can pass common sense things, not infringe on the Second Amendment, but our first responsibility is those kids. And I think listening to them make these things up, try and tell you, and then pivot 
to like it's a mental health issue, trying to demonize people who are trying to get mental health care. Oh, at the same time, they're cutting the funding for mental health care. Um, we don't have to live this way. And I brought up in there, and he batted it down, countries that have just as much gun ownership as us, but common sense things in place, their children don't get shot in school. So <laughs> it's just... Uh, Governor Tim Wells is with us. We'll be right back. That was the word of the day. Weird, weird, weird. They're all going... But we're not weird guys. We're very solid people. He's not weird, and I'm not weird. I happen to be a very solid rock. We're not weird. I think we're the opposite of weird. They're weird. You know, he said that J.D. and I are weird. I think we're extremely normal people. We're like you, exactly like... He's weird. We are back with Governor Tim Walls, who... You kind of got the weird ball rolling, didn't you? <laughs> If, if you have to tell people numerous times you're not weird, you might be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, um, you know what? I have a little quiz for you. Help us decide what, what is weird and what is not weird. Weird or not weird? Families wearing matching pajamas at Christmas time. Oh, not weird. Not weird. No. <laughs> wearing a shirt in the pool. Weird or not weird? Not weird. I am weird. <laughs> People who ask you to take your shoes off in the house, is that weird or not weird? No, not weird either. Oh, okay, all right. Tofurky. Oh, that's weird. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to skip to the last one. A six-year-old man drinking Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> that's just life right there. <laughs> 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 This has got to be weird. Um, Bruce Springsteen oh. made a, a lengthy video endorsing you on Friday. Did you know he was doing that? No. 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 Right. Those of you of 60 year old, uh, this is a, a high school kid and got the river, changed my life. It was a religious experience. Bruce Springsteen's the river. And uh... when you say a high school kid, you mean this high school kid? <laughs> Look at that corduroy suit. No, didn't know it. Uh, to have Bruce say that, and my daughter said, Bruce Springsteen knows your name. That was that was the strangest thing uh, over the last few That's months, pretty so, crazy, yeah. isn't it? Have you, you not met Bruce it? yet? I have not met Bruce. Were you yet. married in high school? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is a class ring. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that hair, though. That's the thing I'm looking at. Yeah, so that hair got, is spectacular. Yeah, there you go. You are, without a doubt, the only vice presidential candidate in history for whom this would be uh, uh, an enticing way to raise <laughs> Oh, funds. yeah. That is, um, and yeah. people want your recipe, and have they been making your recipe? They haven't. We're, we're raising money off that recipe. I know that, so yeah. Get those, a hot dish, you know, all the food groups. <laughs> tater tots, cream of mushroom soup, a protein, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Spam is the protein that wins it. That's how I want on that. So. True. The, um... When you got the call from the vice president asking you to be her running mate, is it true that you let it go to voicemail? Yeah, in typical me fashion, I missed it. Uh -huh. I, 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 it was an unmarked number, so I'm thinking it's like a car warranty thing or whatever. And then, <laughs> then I got a call from a, a high-ranking aide that said, pick up your dang phone. So <laughs> they call you, you had their number. And is she in your contacts now so that that doesn't happen again? She is. Yes, she is. How do, may I ask, how do you have the vice president listed in your contacts? It's my dry cleaner. <laughs> is it really? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> my they dry told me cleaner. to come up with something. It's all I could think of. So, uh, yeah. Well, you're probably going to have to change it now. Yeah, I know now. Sorry about. It. But Sorry then, what happens you. if your dry cleaner needs to get in touch with you? You're not going to be. <laughs> I didn't think that far ahead. On your that dry cleaner. <laughs> your dry cleaner can be Madam Vice President. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, uh, so you're, uh, you're on tour right now. You're, you're talking to people. You're meeting people. You've yeah. been to L.A. before, I assume? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You like it here? Sense. I do. I yeah. do like it. I, uh, I defend California. I say it's beautiful out here. You know, they always, in Minnesota, they're like, oh, you're trying to turn Minnesota into California. They never say it in February. No one ever says it then. <laughs> uh, the idea is, look, it's a, it's a beautiful state, and, um, coming out here and seeing folks. And Who's running Minnesota while you're gone? Is there well, a, still, like yeah, a babysitter there? I'm still there. I stop in, and yeah. uh, our team is there. I uh, went back and did some interviews for judges, uh, you know, continue to hire judges in Minnesota. Folks who follow the rule of law, that's a good thing. Yeah, and, that would um, be nice, yeah. So, yeah. So, we still make it work. Good team. <laughs> uh, 
Well, it's great to have you here, and uh, you know, I think a lot. I speak for a lot of people, and I say uh, we 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 like you a lot. I mean, you you're a very very like. You seem like to me, <laughs> honestly, and I, and I can come up with no higher compliment than this. But you seem to me like the kind of guy who cleans the lint out of the dryer after every use. Every use. <laughs> Governor Tim Walz, everybody. We'll be right back with Jenna.